Okay. You have referenced to the estrogenation of man as one of the most important yet largely uncovered trends. What is this? What causes it and what can be done to fix it? I feel a little bit bashful trying to answer this question because truthfully, I don't think I'm robust enough in my understanding of the fact base. I think I have enough of the facts to appreciate the trend, but I don't think I fully appreciate all that's going on. If you take a look at, if you took a bunch of men in the 1950s and you drew their blood and you measured their testosterone levels, their estrogen levels, et cetera, and you did the same thing today with a similar cohort, you matched them for as many variables as you could, you would notice that their testosterone today is lower and their estrogen today is higher. And so the question is why? Um, I don't think we know the answer, but one of the things probably would have to do with just the increase in obesity because uh, obesity obviously implies more adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is where we're going to see more of the enzyme called um, aromatase that turns testosterone into estrogen. And so if you have more adipose tissue and potentially more aromatase, you will undergo that chemical reaction more of turning the testosterone into estrogen. Silly question, but is that, is that a part of like the, the nature of puberty when if women are putting on more fat, that it's uh, converting some of that testosterone to estrogen? Probably, although I think for the case of women going through puberty, the dominant production of estrogen, of course, is in the gonads. Mm. Um, so I don't know how much of the testosterone to estrogen conversion is, is actually taking place for them, or more to the point, how, how much it contributes to the overall level of estrogen. Because yeah. um, we know, for example, if you just take a step back and you look at a woman's ovulation cycle, yes, testosterone varies a little bit during her ovulation cycle. It might vary by a factor of 2x, but estrogen can vary by more than 10x. Wow. So you know that that's really being controlled at the level of the ovary. Um, I think another factor that has been proposed and I think is worthy of exploration, and honestly, this is a topic I would love to find the world's expert on and explore in detail, is chemicals that can mimic the effects of estrogen and or increase the production of estrogen. And uh, so lots of plastics have been proposed to do this. Again, I don't think all plastics are created equal, so I, I, I'm not sure that, you know, putting your your leftover cereal, I was going to say, who has leftover cereal? I don't know. But putting like your leftover whatever into your plastic Tupperware into your fridge, I don't know how much of a role that's playing versus, say, drinking your coffees out of cups that have those little plastic lids, especially where the slit that you drink is super fine. And therefore, mm -hmm. you know, you're probably more likely to um, sort of solubilize some of those plastics there. So look, one of the things we do with, with, with patients is we just sort of try to get them off plastics, especially off plastics that are going to have any temperature, any, any high temperature with them. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the hardliner in my household about this stuff, which is we just switched over to all the glass containers. Um, we still use some plastic stuff, but I try to like limit, like if I make whipped cream, I'll put it in there and put it in the fridge because it's basically starts cold, stays cold, eh, less of a concern. You know, I try to, and again, sometimes I'd lose this fight, but I kind of try to make sure we don't put anything plastic in the dishwasher. Again, part of it is like, if I'm not there to do the dishes, who am I to gripe about it? But if I'm doing the dishes, I'm not putting plastic in the dishwasher. I'm just going to wash that stuff by hand. How much of a stuff, how much of a difference does any of this stuff make? I don't know. I've had one patient who actually just emailed me two days ago because we had this discussion like two months ago and he was, he's like, I'm off the plat. He's like, I'm drinking like 10 coffees a day through those stupid cups. I mean, I'm being facetious, but it's a lot. And so we put them on the all no plastic protocol, including- a, I call that a lightweight, is it 10? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and so he called me and he's like, look, it could be totally placebo, but I feel a hundred times better having not changed anything that I'm consuming, but only changing the containers through which I consume it. I have absolutely no idea mm. um, if this is making a difference or not. And furthermore, we don't even know what we're measuring. Because remember, when you do a lab test and you're measuring estrogen, I mean, first of all, you're usually just measuring, measuring estradiol. We rarely measure estrone or estriol in men. 
And then who do, how do we even know? There could be a whole bunch of pseudoestrogens that are floating around that are exerting other biologic effects that are estrogenizing, but you can't measure them in the serum. So again, I think what I've illustrated is nothing more than I'm an ignoramus on this topic who knows a little bit, but we should probably know a lot more about this so that I could speak with more authority. So yeah. all suggestions welcome for who the expert is on the topic. Okay.